paranormal Karen. She's so spooky. Paranormal Karen. Funny too. Paranormal Karen. She's so spooky. Oh, and did I mention she's funny too? Yeah. Cha cha cha. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Paranormal Karen. Um, I. Uh, it is March. It is March. So um, hopefully I will see you in Chinook Winds Casino the 8th and 9th. Oh, I think that already went by. Okay. All right. Never mind, everybody. I will see you at Stir Crazy in Phoenix, May 8th and 9th. I think it's the 8th and 9th. Holy cow, I got to get my shit together. All right. Welcome to Paranormal Karen. Let's get right to today's guest. Uh, Alex Glenn is back. She is back. And um, we are going to talk about things that make us all uncomfortable in the paranormal or metaphysical field. Isn't that sound exciting, uh, Alex? I think it does. I think we like all share our like shining hero stories. And then sometimes really there are parts of this work that like are unnerving and uh, cause us to have to really think about what reality is and check in with ourselves. So I feel yes. like let's get, let's get uncomfortable. Yes. Oh, uh, you also do a lot of sex. Uh, psychic. I almost said sexual work. No, not uh, my words are all twisted today. You do psychic energy work, which could be, but we're not talking about that. Um, and you're also a death doula. I'm going to start. I have a question for you as a death doula, because I was kind of writing a joke that we have a, a, a death doula following my mother around <laughs> because we want her to pass. It's just a joke. Everyone calm down. Um, do you work with people who want to pass or are not quite there? Like, where is the starting point? When do you call your death doula? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, So a lot of death doulas have a full spectrum of work. So I have clients who I've seen who maybe like have had um, breast cancer, like a terminal illness or diagnosis, and then they are in remission and doing well. And then I work with them, like when it comes to death anxiety, I have, um, clients who are parents who have children and then all of a sudden are like facing um, their own mortality. And they're like, how do I talk to kids about death and things like that? So I talk to people who, uh, I mean, we're all, we're all inevitably closer to dying with every day, but I talk to people who aren't even necessarily actively um, dying all the way to like, you know, someone's been diagnosed and they're like, Hey, I want to get my affairs in order. How, what does this look like? So realistically, any time you're willing to talk about death, I think is a good time to have a death doula. But for the practical standpoint, um, usually when you're on hospice or when we're starting to um, do respite or comfort care, um, as opposed to um, measures that we take to try to recover. Um, but I also have people who just are getting older and want to create a legacy or a story to um, pass on to their loved ones after they're gone. And so I think just, Oh, that's really interesting. Wait, what is that? Yeah. Is that a, uh, what is that, uh, where you t help someone with that? Um, so let's just say somebody's getting a bit older and they're starting to just feel the fact that they know that ending chapters are coming and they go, I want to leave my family with something that feels like me and looks like me. Um, where when I'm gone, they can, and they, I always say like, a death doula's job when it comes to legacy is to create a container or a box that someone can touch their loved one after their loved one is no longer in body and you can't, you know, reach out and give them a hug or you can't, you can't have the, that banter with them. Like we try to take the most um, individual and unique parts of that person and uh, put it in a recipe. Like I had a friend who she's not dying and she's, we're just, I, I, the, all the conversations around me are centered around something morbid or weird or whatever, because that's just the way my life is structured. <laughs> she was saying, oh my gosh, wouldn't it be so fantastic to like plan this joke funeral? And she's like, it's, I, I have it in the middle of like the August heat. It's outdoors. There's no bathrooms. Um, all I'm serving is candy, like no, like no real food. And she just, she would love to pull like this one last prank on everyone. And, <laughs> um, so I, realistically, legacy can look like, hey, let's compile all the recipe books. Mom was like this incredible cook or it can, it can, it's just, it's so personal. Um, so, and some people, you know, like are very, I know you're eco-conscious and things like that. Some people want to do um, like, 
something that impacts the environment as little or actually gives back to the environment when it comes to death. And it, so, yes. Um, and you can be a tree. Can't they make you a tree somewhere? That's a thing. Know? Okay. So there are a lot of things like the mushroom suit and like the tree pod that are like concepts that haven't actually been proven yet. It oh. gets really technical, um, but uh, they're working on it. There are some cool ways um, that you can do organic, um, natural reduction, which is kind of like composting. Um, and then you can do that and plant around it. But the tree thing is that everybody always thinks the tree and the mushroom suit are ready to go, but they're not quite. They're close. Though. Oh, I want to um, turn into a zombie from The Walking Dead and force a family member to put a knife in my skull. <laughs> <laughs> I joke with my kids all the time um, with like these really morbid things. Like I'm like, okay, I want you to organic compost and then plant a blueberry bush on top of me. And I need you guys to bake a pie once a year <laughs> and eat me. I'm like, or uh, I'm going to, I'm going to do a shrunken head. Like you make me into a shrunken head and hang me from your uh, rear view in your car. You guys <laughs> I all love take it. Turns. I love it. Um, wow. So that's interesting. You know, there are so many things now of videos and stuff like that, that you can really look at that. That is a fascinating. Uh, okay. So that's good. So it's funny because you always think death doula, that person shows up on the deathbed and like the grim reaper, everybody's like, holy cow, get Alex out of here. I'm staying around. <laughs> um, and I, yeah, I think, I mean, we do do that as well. We do like active dying, but we make it fun. We're like, what's your favorite room in uh, your house? What window do you want to look out? What sounds do you want to hear? Are we playing Bon Jovi the whole time? Like, you know, it should, that can look like you. Yes. You know, I have a joke about this, but people used to hire ventriloquists to speak for the dead at funerals. That was the original job. It wasn't a form of entertainment. And then it somehow moved onto the stage. Um, oh my God, that's fantastic. Isn't it? It's like fantastic and creepy. And the punchline is, uh, funerals would be way better attended and people would be leaving like dad looked great but what was with all the dick jokes that was kind of weird um because if you know but what a what a weird uh right like that's where it started i, know, I love it Another i love it i think creepy fact from karen <laughs> i love it um, well, wonderful. All right. So you and I, uh, we were talking about sort of things that have changed our perspective on reality. I was like, Alex, what should we talk about? And you brought this up. Give a good explanation of what we are talking about. Like the time you were like, okay, this is real, right? Yeah. So I think... Um... I just think that there have been times where I've had clients come in and the sessions that we've done have not only like been this incredible work, but I think it just, this work causes you to examine the bounds of reality really frequently. And I think it can honestly, for back of, lack of a better word, like make you feel crazy sometimes. And I feel like you have to constantly be willing to grow with this work, to ground yourself with this work, to like expand. And I feel like um, it's not something that maybe in some of the development classes um, for different gifts and things that's talked about a ton. I know that we, I feel like there's a gap between we have these um, podcasts or books or like documentaries that come out that kind of scare us and cause us to question things. And then we have, um, you know, mediums and psychics coming out and telling these incredible stories. But I feel like there's like a middle piece missing mm -hmm. of what this work actually does to you and asks of you. And so I thought it'd be interesting to like tell some good stories and uh, just like talk about the ways that it's changed us. Yes. Well, and also kind of expanding on that topic in a different way. There is, uh, somebody told me about this and every once in a while, somebody told me about this right now. And every once in a while, this comes up in a reading that it is 3d time. It is time to take care of your body. It's time to take care of your car. It's time to take care of your home. And there is, you have to, you will be pulled out of that airy fairy. You will be pulled out of it to sort of just be human. You know what I mean? 
A hundred percent. I literally just said this to a client yesterday that I was like, if we create this narrative that we're always supposed to be ascending and like at our highest vibration, like when we do dip down into the 3D, I get people coming in going, I think I've lost my life purpose. I'm off the path. And I'm like, no, you're just, you're human. You're doing it both. Like toggle between both like points. It's a point of view. Like you're down here doing 3D for a reason. Like it's just as sacred as like, you know, the ascension and all of that. So I, I'm a hundred percent on board with you. Yeah. And also there is a, um, all right. I, I, I swear to God, I'm pulling us way off topic, but I think we're going there anyways. Um, Right now, so as we're taping this, this problem should, should be solved by the time this comes out. But we're, we almost have my mom where she should be that would give me, that would make it able for me to leave or come back or having someone else care for her so that 95% of my stress goes away. It keeps coming and going, coming and going, that sort of thing. Um, and I feel like that is to see someone get old or get dementia. That is a reality check of who this is like, there are, we can manifest all we want, but this might be coming. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a really good point that, um, having to integrate this idea of manifestation and like just higher consciousness and the fact that we are, you know, some energy form, soul, whatever you want to call it inside of a physical body means that there are rules and limitations and Mm -hmm. there, there, there's just a structure of the way earth and earth magic and all of it, like reality exists here. And you can only bend so far. Uh, and isn't that kind of, I know I'm going to veer with you that like, you know, when you see the cult leaders who are like, oh my gosh, we're going to ascend out of this. Like, there, isn't it kind of the same idea that like we're denying our own humanity in mm. order to only focus on like, we're all going to get elevated and no sickness is going to catch us. And you see like, you see them getting sick. You see people dying and they have to come up with these new like fallacies and these new ways to trick themselves into holding on to old truth rather than going, oh, shoot. No, I guess we are still human. I have to be both. Yes, yes. And I do believe there are people who could be so, um, I don't know, powerful or uh, ascended that they can change their physical, you know, senses or um, there's probably somebody out there that knows how to use their whole entire brain to heal themselves or whatever they want to do. I don't know that person. I'm not that person. Uh, that would be the person I would take a class from, but I think we are, con- you know, it's kind of like, um, I'm going to use some weird examples, but this is, yeah. uh, I do live a lot in imagination. That's how I write. That's how I create. That's how I manifest. But right now, so as I'm looking at this period of time where I might be leaving, I'm looking at my car and I'm like, you know what? You you have the money, go buy a car, pay for it out, have the car. Uh, all this plan, I see myself driving away in the car. The actual 3D of going out to look at a new car is like, my, I can't get, you know what I mean? Don't you wish if we could manifest, I'd just look out and go, oh, the new car is there. The paperwork is done. I already paid for it, that kind of stuff. Like this is like the... It red tape and the minutia that makes me crazy thinking about car insurance and all that stuff. Like that is the 3d world that kills me. But I also yeah. feel like if I don't start looking at new cars, universe is going to take this one. Yeah, no. Yeah. I told the, I totally agree. And I, um, I think it'd be like fantastic if I didn't have to <laughs> order life and like make uh, just, yeah, the, bo- the boring pieces. But I also feel like Every once in a while, someone will come to me and they'll be like, okay, but what do you think about atheists? And I'm like, I think atheists make a very um, sacred space in the present moment. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's just as valid. And so it's one of those things where I, I, and maybe that's because I straddle this line of the energy work and the death doula that like death is a very spiritual, but also 3D like experience. It requires you to check into the physical body, but it's also a wildly spiritual time as well. And so I think it's one of those things where I go, okay, if I have to do 3D, I'm going to make it like 
important and fun and valuable as right. much as like the ascension process and like when I'm in like the really like crazy weird spaces and so I feel like we can um I don't know what I'm going to say, like sanctify, like we can like make magic in both. The magic is just different. One is more dense, you know? That's great. That's a great way to say it because I felt like, I always felt like I made my life magic. And these two years with my parents were like the reality check. Like Mm -hmm. uh, it really was just, uh, I hate to say it this way, but we're not all free. We have to figure out where we're free and where we're not free. And freedom for me is being able to go wherever I want and do whatever I want. And other freedom for other people is having dinner with their kids. Like we're all just together. So everybody has, that's what I'm trying to base my next special on is what is freedom to you? Um, But yes, it, uh, because even physical impairments, it was interesting. There was this girl, I read her book about channeling. She was channeling and her mother dictated everything and asked the questions. And one day she said, I don't want to do it because I don't feel well. And uh, the channel said, actually, when you don't feel well is when you do some of your best work because you're um, being uh, forced out of your body. And I thought that was interesting. Oh my gosh, I can totally relate to that one of my favorite techniques is um like I'll force myself to wake up in the morning and then I'll like get my questions going and then go back to sleep and kind of when I'm not really checked in all the way is when things come through so clearly oh you know what this is a good transition into a story so oh okay you know what I'm gonna hold you right there we're gonna take a break and come back with that story so hold on everybody we'll be right back Are you a seeker who craves a life of authenticity and freedom, but can't seem to get unstuck from experiences of duality? My name is Z, and I spent years stuck in victimhood, craving enlightenment, but trapped in a cycle of two steps forward and what felt like a hundred steps back. I felt like I was drowning in fear and shame until I started learning about the nervous system. It turns out that while we are spiritual beings, we are only able to be here because of these physical bodies, and the nervous system is just trying to keep us alive by bringing us back to fight, flight, freeze responses. We can get stuck in these defense states, or we can gain resilience by developing a respectful and trusting relationship with our nervous system. If you're ready to learn more, check out my YouTube channel and join us for online coaching and courses by going to www.anexperiencer.com. That's anexperiencer.com. See you there. Okay, Alex, go ahead. Pick that up. Uh, You were going to tell us a story. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. So I was going to say some of my weirdest and most specific um, messages that come through will be like 30 minutes before a session, I'll be doing something like like prepping the room that I work in or like brushing my teeth or like whatever and not really focused, just kind of when you get in that zone, you're just doing the tasks that are monotonous Mm -hmm. and um, really specific things come through. And I'm going to start with this one because you said sex work and I'm like, I actually have something that written down on the list that has to do with sex work. So we'll just (laughs) run with it. Um. So I had a client one time, she, I didn't, I don't know who referred her. I literally only have a name when they like make the appointment. Mm -hmm. Um, And we had never seen each other before. And I'm brushing my teeth, getting ready for her to get here. And all of a sudden, I like just get this like 10 second flash of her like walking up to my door and I can see around her in this like, kind of in like her energetic field, it looks the whole thing is orange and I can hear voices in like the orange and it's just so much chatter. It's a lot of um, men and she comes to the door and she's like very put together. Like you just, she doesn't, um, I, I guess my point is she doesn't read as someone that like, I'm going, this is what a strange message. Um, Hey, this is, this is something funny, but I'm seeing a ton of men in, um, your sacral, like lots of them and they don't belong there and there's no business. And like, do you mind telling me what's, what does that mean to you? And she's going, Oh my gosh. Well, like, you know, in my twenties, yada, yada, um, I was doing sex work and it wasn't something that I was like 
excited about or something that I, it wasn't something that was empowering for her essentially. And um, she's like, I just, I feel like I emotionally overconnected and like created these chords with a lot of the um, men that I was seeing at the time. And I'm going, here she is 20 years later, living a very different, fulfilling life that she's really proud of and happy with. And that's not to say, I just want to clarify, that's not to say that sex work can't make you feel No, it's happy, everybody's happy, different just, frequency. Yeah, that's a, yeah. Yeah, this just, that wasn't her story or experience. And so um, I just was so surprised at how visceral that message came in when I wasn't looking for her. I had already done my prep stuff for her to come and it just um, was one of those things where it really made me consider like what we, hmm, we talk a lot about courting and I think we don't always consider that imbalanced compassion um, can create just as strong of energetic cords to others than um, some of the other things that we like frequently talk about, like trauma. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just thought that that was like a really interesting piece to know that she was like intimate with these people, but like really the courting when I read it was just her overextension of like compassion and allowing these people in. And I just, it was one of those things that made me wonder how often are we attaching people to ourselves through an overabundance of um, compassion and yes. empathy that's like imbalanced? You know I, what I mean? was just writing that down as you said it. And there's something about that. First of all, on the other conversation that we were having, I do want to say, I think atheists that this is interesting I know a lot of paranormal investigators that are atheist, but it doesn't mean they don't believe in the spirit world or they don't believe there's something else. They just don't believe in the same old white man or whatever, you know, in the white gown or whatever. So atheism, I think, is really I also don't think if there is a God, he's going to care. He or she is going to care. They're going to be like, <laughs> hey, you did all right. Yeah, I am here. Yeah. Oh, good. OK. Yeah. Um, What you were just talking about, about too much compassion. And yes, I feel like I feel like this is any type of work like uh. I there was a medium on that did not believe in demons. Uh and she didn't believe in a lot of stuff and I mm-hmm. on the on the podcast I said I wonder if you skipped a frequency which came across kind of I didn't mean to say it that way but I think some of us skip frequencies. Not that isn't her frequency or somehow. You know what I mean? And when you I were saying it. I not only and I'm going to not throw these together because they belong together but because they are extremes which is sex work working with darker stuff in the paranormal not always light and other stuff like police officers or politicians you have a particular frequency so if you're going to I feel like I know exactly what this girl went through if you're going to make me a uh, dominatrix, it's not going to work, right? Like I'm not on that frequency. There could be a different kind of compassion, not too much, but I feel like she may have been doing this with an alternate kind of, um, yeah, not thinking about herself. I know I'm jumping all over, but this is the thing that happens with my mom, which is the same thing on a different level. You can get too compassionate, worry about her 24 seven, wake up all night worrying about her. And that is when I get lost. And then if I know my sister is with her and I sit for an hour and the attention turns back to me, I'm okay. I'm myself again. So people that are living in that too much compassion, it's, uh, it is traumatizing. Yeah, I think it's just, it's going to bed with the door unlocked all the time. And I don't think that everyone you interact with has maybe like negative, intentional, nefarious things. But I do think lack of boundaries. um, And like, I know I've heard you talk about like energetic vampires and things like that. I think that there are people who um, literally don't have a language for how to care for themselves outside of that framework. And so they just attach. It's like a natural instinctual thing because they don't have like they just don't have like the internal structure to do anything differently and so um yeah i just thought it was really interesting that she 
didn't identify with that life significantly anymore. Her life looked very different, but they still, she was walking up to the house and there they are in her sacral. Um, Mm -hmm. And they, like her sacral was huge, just blown out massive. And I think it was um, just disorienting still for her. And obviously we were able to get him out and, and leave and stuff like that. But when I consider how long she was potentially carrying that and how it would have shown up in other relationships, just that being so wide open and not feeling like she was all the way in control of being able to set her own boundaries and probably seeing that like patterning show up um, yeah. in subtle ways. Yeah. And also that's the kind of thing I think makes people sick. Like it sits oh, yeah. somewhere like I've for years been working on what is that heavy feeling in my chest, which I think it's grief and that's finally breaking up and whatever is finishing off here. It's good. But I was always like, you have to watch your lungs because that's where mm-hmm. something is sitting and you could pop be one of those people that pops up with lung cancer, even though you're not smoking. So you have to adjust that. Or I carry a lot on my back right shoulder. So I think we that's the stuff that we have to keep an eye on so to speak um have Earlier. you ever had a near-death experience um no i haven't had a near-death experience i haven't i want one really badly oh my gosh i'm the same i was like i was like hesitating to say it but i'm like oh, i'm always so jealous they always seem to come back with such good insight i know and it's like a reset it's like a reboot right uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I want a nice one where you don't get hurt, where like you bang your head and you're in the hospital for a day and then you walk out and you're like, I got it now. I know it's all there. Yeah, you got to specify an easy one and a pretty one. <laughs> yes, exactly. Not a negative one, although that's where I think sometimes well, they're the most interesting. So the universe might be like, well, if you think they're interesting, here you go. I'm out. Um, yeah, it is interesting to have that reset. So when you work with someone like that, is it an energetic, like I have found that when people try to cut their own cords, myself included, it doesn't work that well. Does, is, do you have any tips or should we all just go to you? That's a good thing too, right? (laughs) No, don't just come to me. I'm a big fan of like, find your healers who resonate with you and use them. I don't think there's a single person who's like, this is the one, like find your people. Um, but I, okay. So cutting cords, usually I'll tell you exactly what I do in the process. So I will usually, um, call in like someone else's, like, let's say we're cutting a cord between all of those people. I'll call in a representative of like someone's higher self, someone from their team, um, call in their subconscious if possible and just be like, hey, we're giving you your stuff back with love and gratitude. We want you to be able to heal in your own time. And if my client, her name is is holding this for you, your healing is like subject to the ways that she's holding you and things like that. So we want to give you your autonomy back. Love you. Bye. And um, I think when we release with gratitude um and then hold that boundary it looks a little different and i honestly i do the same thing if i come across anything really spooky or dark i'll usually ask it hey with curiosity why did you attach what are you here for what lesson are you teaching um and then kind of do something similar i'm like with gratitude thank you for showing um you know the guilt and shame or thank you for showing the wounding um i appreciate it i'll take it and I'd say like most of the time, the Mm -hmm. spooky thing does. Um, But I I think when it comes to cord cutting, keeping that, uh, I think where you get in trouble, especially when you're cutting your own, is you get like the storyline. So the guilt and the shame, and I shouldn't have done this, or like Uh. I was wrong for doing this. And I feel like that makes it really difficult to cut your own cord. And that's why I lead with a lot of curiosity on autonomy when I cut cords. Um, Does that make sense? It does. And you know what else? Sometimes with, uh, you know, it's one of those things that's just complicated. Like when you were talking about cutting a cord with something dark, that person Mm -hmm. might be very comfortable with that dark thing. That might be a family attachment. There's a million things that it could be and probably another million that we don't even know about. Um, Mm -hmm. And it could be something you carry for someone else or I don't know, there's a million things, but that does make sense. Is there any way, like I always try to meditate on a complete reset. (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah. Like we should, have, I'm doing a 90 day countdown. I should do a 90 day reset to try and just get rid of everything, but it's hard. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't even know. Well, I guess I would ask what like you like, okay, so what's your intention for the reset? Because I feel like there's so much value um, at times and picking through the things we want to get rid of. Um, do you remember when everybody was doing that, like Marie Kondo? Um, yes, like, I still the, love that. <laughs> you, yeah. And it just, and it's one of those things where I'm like, I don't mind that you're getting rid of everything, but like, just thank it as you get, as you get rid of it. Because mm-hmm. I feel like if we're like, ah, oh, this is all bad. I need a full reset. It's kind of like when somebody tells you like, oh no, if you do that, you're going to get rid of your good bacteria. Like if you do like a full reset right. or like if you clean a wound or whatever, like in terms of uh, like getting rid of the good stuff too. I feel like if we're doing a full reset, the consequence to that is yes, I get a full reset, but I know that I also have to agree with getting rid of some of the good with the bad because that's what a full reset is. You know what I mean? Yeah. Excellent uh, example with the probiotics. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can't, you don't kill everything. Yeah, that's a really good whatever I'm ready to get rid of right now. Um, yeah, because it's all attached. I feel like like there's this strange story about this. I went to this yoga class once and there was this young teacher and she yelled at me through the whole class, like by name. And I really mm-hmm. don't care, you know, whatever I do comedy. But I was it really stuck with me like what? happened why did she focus like I keep and and I run it over and over and over and over and this was like four years ago and I could still see her face I'm still afraid I'm gonna go back to LA to a yoga class it's gonna be her and I'm gonna (laughs) have to say hey can you leave me alone but it's a really interesting like let's take that example so is that attached to let's say me feeling like I don't belong certain places or why does that cord sort of research? I have done that a couple of times where I was like, just let her go, send her away with love. But it's like a reoccurring, would that be a fear? Mm, you know what? I um, had a, I was talking to someone recently and she was in um, an abusive relationship in in reality and like in the real world. Mm -hmm. And she was talking about how she has this um, desire to like watch a lot of true crime. And she's like, I know it's kind of morbid because this has been like something that I've experienced. And I was like, but don't you kind of feel like the more you like are watching those things that you're watching to see people get the justice that you feel like you were denied. Like there's something really satisfying in that. And I just wonder if we're re-looping those stories, right? Like if, if we can still see her face and if it still like pulls up this visceral feeling, like I wonder what is it that we're looking for? And I think that's how I would identify the cord. Like, am I looking for someone to step in and be like on my behalf? Hey, like leave Karen alone. Like, do I want the lady (laughs) on the mat to the right to be like, shut up? Or is it me where I want to be like, Hey, I noticed you were calling me out a lot by name. It made me uncomfortable. What's that all about? And going like, oh, that chord has to do with like me stifling my own voice or like, so when we replay it, I go, what, what outcome would be like ideal? What would we love to see? And that's kind of where I'd start with like identifying the chord. You know that, that, yeah, that's interesting because it's the living back going, I should have said this or I should have like made a note that, hey, that's not cool. And I didn't. So I didn't stand up for myself. I think that's the loop. Um, but well, you, that's so, like you use your voice, like you use your mm-hmm. voice all the time. You podcast, you're a comedian, like you, like your voice is your power and your tool and so much of your art form. And so again, like to not speak up is almost like a double, it's like right. a double hit, right? <laughs> right. Yes, absolutely. You know what too? Uh, okay. I'm gonna, um, I just paused it and Alex, of course, you are so full of wisdom or you're exactly who I need to talk to today or both. Um, because I had to stop a couple of times because I was actually literally making the acknowledgement of the same topic of this, uh, podcast, which is that the 3d world is a little overwhelming right now. So my brain is not right in the right place. Um, and also when we were talking about I think I'm going to get way woo woo and this could be way uncomfortable because I know I'm switching lanes again, but too bad. And then we'll take a break and come right back. Um, (laughs) 
I feel like right now the matrix is resetting. Now, I don't know where the matrix and God fit in, but I believe in both of them. Okay. Or a force or a universe. And there I've been watching a lot of things and they've been talking about the glitches and the people and everything being weird right now. And us kind of getting superpowers this year or all kinds of stuff waking up. But I get this feeling there is a reset in the matrix. And that is maybe why we're having our crap tossed at us or our trauma. Like we're resetting get rid of this. Does that make sense? Yeah, it totally does. And I think, I think, so even in like the spiritual community, um, what, like you, you're going, Oh, the matrix or God, or like whatever we call it. Like, I feel like there's so much evolution, especially when you're doing this work, because frankly, there are times where like I have Um, like beings that I can't always identify step in and assist in sessions because they're on like my client's team or something like that. And um, I feel like it expands, (laughs) it expands like what we call the matrix or like the higher power or whatever that is. And I just go, I don't, I don't know where this all fits in. And I'm going to loop all the way back around and go, I think it's, I think when it comes to the internet and having this like ability to access a ton of um, different perspectives Mm -hmm. with a really low cost or really low burden, it requires all of us, not requires, but it offers us this opportunity to like self-evaluate and identify our trauma and see ourselves through the eyes of others. And I think um, I just, I don't know what other response could happen with this amount of like ability to self-reflect and ability to see others' perspectives without like significant costs. Like it's not hard to open TikTok and listen to a voice that isn't my own. And Ah, I think, yes, you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't really watch the news. I watch it a little. And then this is what's very interesting. I have a friend who's a political guy that sometimes I watch, But I have actually realized I haven't watched the news in a couple of weeks and I still feel informed. Does that sound strange? Like, I still know what's going on. Like, I don't think I need to turn on the headlines or hear anyone to know what's going on. Like, I think we're kind of in tune like that. Yeah. And I think even when we just like look back to even, I mean, let's say like 20 years ago, like I just, I feel like if you didn't know someone who could introduce you to a new perspective or like show you your trauma, if you didn't have an excellent therapist, if you didn't happen to pick up a book or have a neighbor down the street that like could introduce you to new concepts and ideas, um, growth was really slow and different. And so when you're talking about this expansion or this change or this reset, when it comes to like higher consciousness, I just feel like we have access to so much information Mm -hmm. that I don't know how we as a society don't um, come to the point where we have these massive shifts because I think so much of the spiritual community is shifting as well and trying to become more conscious and expand. And so I don't, I just, I don't know how the subsequent like, uh it's a, it's almost really a test in your discernment oh yeah yeah and i tell clients this all the time that i feel like the um days of absolute truth right are like they're gone like not truth is perspective <laughs> oh my god you keep hitting it not only are they gone and i've said this on a couple of podcasts i'm very leery of anyone that is that sure of themselves that they're yeah. sure that this is it. And every once in a while, you know, of course, there's the algorithm of life also, which is like, I don't run into a lot of strict religious people, but every once in a while I do. And I think, oh, we're still doing that. Right? There's a whole, <laughs> yeah. there's a whole bunch of people that are still doing that, right or wrong, or making their dimension, like I said, layers of dimensions, their layer might really work with that. But I feel like there is a brutal awakening for anyone that is sure um, because absolute truth is no more. There is only your own absolute truth for who you would like to be. Yes, that's the perfect way to put it. Because realistically, you can, ha- like you're saying, you can click on a certain news channel, you can hop on a certain like 
TikTok or Instagram or whatever, like a, you can read an article that supports one thing and then there are 10 more that support the exact opposite and yes. you can disprove what you just read. And so, yeah, discernment is key. And that means that you have to heal your own trauma or your discernment is like, yes. And you, <laughs> it, there's another thing too. Like I am doing my, when I said I'm doing a 90 day reset, I don't like who I am here in Utica. I'm still in Utica. I'm doing it in Utica, but I'm resetting like what I it, it just, I'm resetting how I think and which is a good thing and who I want to be. And I remember I still talk to one of my friends that still refers to me as the ha happiest comedian she ever met. And I'm like, not here, not now. I hope that's coming back. But uh, discernment, you know, because even now they had AI Taylor Swift, which wasn't her. They can now redo your voice. Exactly. They did an AI George Carlin special. And you know what? It was pretty. I'm amazed when people say that wasn't how he would say things. The voice, they couldn't replicate the voice probably for legal reasons. But I thought the attitude, I was like, wow, they nailed it. So uh, it's all about, I don't think we're going to know what is real and what isn't until, you know, the car pulls out and we get hit and go, okay, this is what's real. This is 3D. Oh man. Like that's such an interesting idea to even say like, so pain, like pain is going to be the indicator of reality. Like if this is capable of actually hitting. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm just focused on my car. And just so you know, I always picture my car getting hit, but I step out and they, I, they go, Oh, it doesn't look bad, but the transmission's gone. You should sell it. Okay. Then does someone give me the, okay. <laughs> Cause I, I get such an attachment. I swear to God and everyone, you should do this. I, I really think Utica was an example in me using the word hate and, 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 but I'm not going to be inauthentic, but I will say this, my little car, <laughs> this is so ridiculous, got me from Los Angeles to here and here without a problem. And every time I get into it, I say, I love you. And then I say, I'm so sorry. I had to bring you here. And I swear to God, that car is like a miracle car just because that's how I talk to it. So I don't even want it to hear me. I don't know how I'm going to let go of it and get a new one. Maybe I will just rebuild the whole thing. But like, I, that's a great example of love your things. Uh, you know what? I'm going to take a break and we'll be right back with something. Hey, everybody. How's that spiritual awakening going? I know. Don't worry. Help is here. Highlyspiritualperson.com is a haven for spiritual misfits and empaths navigating spirituality and mental health. My friend Camille has a plethora of resources on her site to help you on your spiritual journey even if you're just starting out. It includes individual and collective Reiki sessions, personalized guided meditations, sleep affirmation tracks, and so much more. Camille has so much to offer. She's going to be on my podcast in December. I can't wait to talk to her. Her blog posts and podcast episodes explore spirituality and are great for folks carving out their own path. She has written two easy to follow guidebooks, one on breathwork and the newest book, is called Manifestation is Easy, and it features 22 step-by-step -step manifestation techniques, as well as tips and advice on how to overcome the most common blocks and start changing your reality. Go to highlyspiritualperson.com. I promise you, you will get lost in how much information is in there. It's one of my favorite rabbit holes. Yeah, you happy? Yes, I'm good. I just hit record. So that is on. So it's oh, good. Nice. Yes, it's very good. I just tell you one thing. And then we're going to get into those uncomfortable stories. Um, they, uh, 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 I should take another parapsychology course at the Ryan Institute. People look it up if you really want to know this stuff and you really want the facts. Because they did studies on people who said they hated technology or they hated computer. And time after time, the person that said they hated technology got a bad computer, got a bad program, got a glitch. And the people that were like, I get technology, always picked the better car, computer, or whatever. So that is even with technology to change your language. So um, tell me your story that you started and I interrupted you 400 times. <laughs> oh, I've got like a million. What do you want to do? Do you want to do ETs? Do you want to do, I know you, I've heard you talk about hungry ghosts. You want to talk about uh, 
dead family members being integrated in your energetic <laughs> system. You tell me where we want to go. I want to start, I want to start with ETs. What was that experience? What was your first, either first experience or experience with ETs where your reality shifted? Okay. This is like, I was going to out me as we, I mean, not that I'm not already weird, but this is going to out me like a little. <laughs> That's all right. This podcast is about being free and saying what you want. <laughs> Fair enough. So I'm working on this. Uh, I was working on this woman. Uh, it was a distant session, so she wasn't um, in the room with me. Um, but as I'm working on her, I'm noticing in her like actual spine that there's like there's block that just it looks funny. I'm going. I can't quite figure out how to do this. And so when I can't quite see my way through something, I'll usually ask the client's team, hey, is there anyone who knows how to fix this? You guys have been with her for a long time. I don't mind asking for help. And um, all of a sudden, this ET walks in the room and it looks like a mantis being. And I was familiar that they, like, I was familiar with it. But part of what I do is I purposely, like, won't educate myself all the way on things so that when I have a firsthand experience, it's not tainted by like my expectations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's not to say that I don't, you know, um, explore like the paranormal and things, but I, I try to kind of keep myself in the dark on like maybe certain specifics so that I just, I don't come in with an expectation. So anyway, I see, um, him kind of walk in the room and he, is huge and big and it's like really overwhelming. And I kind of start, I don't feel unsafe, but I start to like panic a little bit. I'm like, you're really big and this is just not scary, but um, just, it was, it was unexpected. And he looks at me and like telepathically goes, oh, you're afraid? And he shifts in, or he shape shifted into a, a human looking man. Ah. And I was like, no, no, no. This is so much worse because I just saw what you look like under there. Please go back. I promise I'll calm down. I will get comfy. Um, but please, no, thank you. And he was like, okay. And so he shifted back. And I'm like, I just, just give me like 15 seconds to like tell my nervous system, hey, babe, we're good. And <laughs> um, so he ends up assisting me and he's literally sitting here showing me like the anatomy of her spine and going, this is where she's holding this energy. Do this here, do this there. And when we, when I get back on the phone with the client and I'm like, Hey, how's your back feeling? Yada, yada. She's like, wow, you know, surprisingly really good. This is so weird. And so we get out of the session and I go to Google and I'd like start Googling the way I like, you know, like the structure of a spine. Mm. Cause I'm like, I don't know that. And there I am, there I'm looking and I'm like, oh my God, it looks like what he showed me. Oh my God. Like it looks exactly like what, like what we were doing is like the anatomy of a spine. And it's not something that I know beyond, you know, like basic high school, mm -hmm. like science. And so, um, I just, there are things like that, that I, I don't always know what to do or sit with because then all of a sudden I go, can I call him in on anything? Was he just there because he's right. connected to her? And like, it just, I think it's one of those things that causes you to reevaluate what is, what is reality. And if I can see this happen in front of me in a room in my home that I work out of while this person is in her own home doing her own thing farther away from me. I just, it not only does it ask you to go, okay, do you believe in ETs? Do you believe that ETs can look like humans? But then it asks you to go, what is reality? Can we, could we actually be asking for them to assist us? How much will they help us? What is like, what's the point? I feel like they're yeah. like the, it's a really quick, um, landslide of just like, what is reality and are we doing it well? Um, and then you ride that line of like a little bit of, I don't I like, I would call it like psychosis a little bit. Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like yeah. it just, anyway, so that's, 
that's my that's my uh, well, I, that's my YouTube word. Sorry. <laughs> yes, not only do I get it, I love that's also something that's in the Bible of these things being like, okay, you can't handle me. I'm going to shape shift into this. So that's not an uncommon probably occurrence. And it is this place where um, we're talking about non, you know, you can't explain yourself. The, the Sometimes it'll happen where all, like say you were doing a meditation group, all three people see the same thing. That's a, yeah. Yeah, but then you go, okay, that's what, how did that happen? Which maybe yeah. you could say collective consciousness or something. But when you know, you know, and it might look crazy to somebody else, but again, this layer or that layer, they're on that layer. They don't have, right. you know, uh, praying mantis giant aliens in, but you're on this layer, which would like be like the people that listen to my podcast. And we're like, yeah, I totally, I could see it in my mind when you say it. Um, I've had a lot of um, those confirmation ones, but the ones that have changed me because I am, I enjoy the darker side. That's why, mm -hmm. you know, the shadow side. And one of my experiences, because I do believe in magic or ritual or spell casting, it's not for me. And I don't mean it's not for me, like it might work. It's almost like I don't have the attention span to do it. Like uh, real witches do a lot of work and they know a lot of things. Yeah. And that's never going to be my path is to know a lot of things. And I don't want to dabble. But every once in a while, something will happen where I'll go, holy crap. And I was reading for someone and I can't, this is kind of why I can't wait to get out of Utica. Utica is a um, earth bound uh, elemental spirit area. I've talked about this a couple of times. I wonder if our astrology has to be connected to the land. So California, airy fairy, I'm all air and fire signs. I kind of feel like that's a point we might be missing about where we live. So I used to get the weirdest stuff when I was in California. And this woman, her husband was talking in his sleep and she was afraid of him. And right, I would say a year before this, I had a ayahuasca trip. And in this trip, I was shown three people and uh, the lady said, uh, this is you. These are all you. And I was like, oh, past life. And she's like, no, this is you. And I was like, oh, who I'm going to be? She's like, no, this is all of you now. Like, I, like I'm like i somewhere, I'm three people. Like, maybe there's three dimensions or something. And I remember what they looked like, too. Uh, one was an Indian woman. Uh, and the other one was a male. I'm not as, I remember the Indian woman so clearly. So as this woman is talking to me about her husband, I just sort of go deeper into the woo. Not every reading goes that far into the woo. And it's very hard for me to get that far in Utica. I can, but it's not like California where I could drop right in. And yeah. um, I see a magician and he looks a little bit like the magician card so that I know that's my thing. And yeah. I immediately get a flashback to the ayahuasca trip and I was like, this is your husband's, I'll just say altar, other person. Mm. And it is a very clever magician. And at night, when your husband drinks, he tries to jump bodies. So it would be like if I was trying, and I'm like, what is coming out of your mouth? What is this insanity, right? And the figure turns around and looks at me and I say to the woman, he can see me. I was like, this is, he could see me that I've come into his field and he's looking right at me yeah. and he's laughing. Yep. And sure enough, a week later, I can't even remember what it was. The place, uh, certain things were happening around my apartment and the dog was doing something. And I called Tommy and Tommy just goes, without hearing anything, I had already forgotten about the reading. He goes, well, what magician did you piss off? <laughs> yep. And oh my gosh. When they look back at you and you realize that they see you looking back at you and you see them looking back at you, ah, uh, that is a special kind of like okay. weird. Oops. Yes. Yes. Have you ever had this problem where you're working on someone and their dog or cat gets very anxious because they know you're in the house? Oh, yeah. 
you know what? I have a, we have a family dog. He hates when I work. He mm-hmm. hates it. He is so skittish and scared. And I like, I put him like up in a different room and I'm like, just you stay up here. I'm going to keep all the spirits down here, baby. <laughs> he hates it. But I, oh yeah, a hundred percent. And that's why I think courage was, I kind of mean this, he's, my dog courage was kind of a jerk and in a good way and probably how we should be as humans. But he wasn't the, I'm going to snuggle up to everybody. And he was very clear when there was something in the apartment, like he would look at me like, you have to get that out now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was one where I was like, it's that place where you could go, am I nuts? Did I see a magician? And then it's like, Uh yeah, you did. And I think that's that piece. Like, I love that you have Tommy to call and be like, hey, what, like, (laughs) oh, good. You saw it too. Like, what are the chances that he just plucks out of all of his knowledge, like the magician? Mm -hmm. And that's again, where you go like, what is reality? Because I could tell myself I'm making this all up in my head and I just, I'm using symbolism and, and I've made this elaborate story, but then all of a sudden you get this confirmation and you you know what happened? There was one time where I'm like, I'm pretty sure I had a client who came to me for something totally different. And I'm like, you have, like, I'm looking at your energetic system and I see like a little boy, he's connected to your dad. Um, he looks like he passed like in, in real life, like around the age of like four, five, six. Um, I think he drowned. Does that mean anything to you? And she's, she's got to be in her sixties and she's going, oh my gosh, my dad did have a brother who, um, in childhood. Yeah, he did. He, he was five. He drowned. Yada, yada. But she's like, I never met him. I didn't know him. I know the story, but I'm like, I mean, he's sitting in your energetic field and it's one of those things where you Like, how could I, how could you guess that and then have like an immediate confirmation? Mm -hmm. And then you go, what is reality? And I think this work does this constantly. And that's, to me, that is an exciting game. That is the part of the game that I, I just hope is never ending, figuring these things out, finding these things. Yeah. Um, you know, it's funny when you were talking earlier about your friend that was watching these crime shows or the true mm-hmm. crime. I think there's another element to that. And this is the element of why women watch that more than men. And when people say, uh, watch out on your intake, where there's a portal open to cosmos, blah, blah, blah. And mm-hmm. be careful what you're thinking, what you're taking in. Again, we are talking layers for different people. Um, And I think that women, I can't even think of the overwhelming amount of fear that is put into women as they get older about men. And, and a lot of it is true. And then it just is, it's a lot of fear. Boys are not brought up to be, you have to watch out for strangers. You can't go on a date. Every man's going to attack you, blah, blah, blah. And women kind of have to know that. Mm -hmm. And I think they have a certain, uh, I I was just talking to someone who just couldn't understand it. And he was, of course, six, five and a big guy that probably had never been bullied. You know, fear, that type of thing. Why don't women Mm -hmm. just go to the police? That's a very complicated answer that you as a six, five man that has never probably been overtaken can't understand or won't try. And I think like when I, I remember when I used to have reoccurring nightmares all the time, watching horror movies took away those nightmares because it was like an accepting level of fear or I can control this much fear. So now I can sleep or it was, there's something about um, actually being better watching these awful things. Does that make sense? You know what? I think sometimes we have like the internal emotion, like the internal trauma, emotional experience, like the fear, the stress, the anxiety. Sometimes it needs like this outward expression. And so I feel like sitting and watching a movie like that is just, it's taking what's inside and allowing it to be projected somewhere else and do something else with it. And Mm -hmm. I feel like at times it's like, okay, I got it out of my body. We talk all the time about not holding on to emotions. And I'm like, I think that's just as valid of a like a caretaking, like stress response to be like, hey, my nervous system's overstimulated. I kind of need like the outward expression. Um, Okay, good. Now I can go to sleep. It's not, it's maybe not a good one for forever, but I see it working. 
<laughs> yes. And also caretaker is like my ultimate nightmare. I'd rather be fighting things in a haunted house than taking care of a person. And a lot of people are probably nodding like that. Like marriage is not my thing. These are not going to be my thing. And they do scare me because they're not a part of my frequency, at least not yet. Um, uh-huh. It's a yes. And it's different from feeding your mind with a picture of killing your husband every day. That's not good. But finding something problem. Right. Finding something outside yourself. That's why I know and there are certain things that really bother me that other people are just good with. But it's it's mm. it's real interesting how there is no reality if our reality is the internet. There's no more reality. Yeah. And I think, you know, I've heard you say this before in other podcasts and like, I think we touched on it in this, that I think the people who choose to deny certain parts of reality, like saying like, oh, there are no demons. There are like, there's nothing really dark. There's no bad like, government. Yeah. It's all going to work. Yeah. How it should. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I think that, I think you're right. I think it's just this choice to create like a boundary and a structure around it. And I think for those of us in this work who sometimes do bump into things that are very dark and spooky, um, it can make us feel like our reality is less true or like that we're less protected or we haven't done the work to ascend out of a reality where like there are dark and scary things. And I just, I feel like it's a really nice permission that you've like given in this episode to say like, hey, reality is layered truth isn't necessarily absolute and we have to accept that other people have limitations to what they're willing to believe and so when they project their thing is the most true and your thing is wrong um it kind of becomes our responsibility to define it and you know if you don't want to work with dark stuff fine that's your business but i don't feel like I you feel like other it, people feel crazy for seeing it. Yeah, because we're in a business where people were told they weren't seeing what they were seeing. And that's why a lot of them are confused. Yeah. But also yeah. um, on that same uh, thing, I, this is maybe a theory that comes from ego. But I had this discussion with my friend Elaine, which was um, maybe they're too, they're not. How do I say this without it being condescending? Maybe it's not part of their experience because they can't handle it. Like it's a lot. And I don't even have my toe in the water as to many people that have done this dark work. But yeah. I would say like, it would be like if it's a naive young school, soul, uh, you know, soul. It's like putting mm-hmm. your kid in a really expensive prep school to keep them away from the world. Maybe they are in a different prep school. And we're supposed to kick things out of the way so they can stay in prep school. And you know what? I totally agree. We So I live in Idaho and we're fighting book bans and yada, yada. Mm-hmm. And it's one of those things where like the argument around taking um, literature away from like children who like, why would they need <laughs> to know and understand this subject? And I'm like, what a gift that you don't resonate with things that are gritty and difficult. Your life experience must be vastly different than those people who see themselves in these books. Um, and I just, I feel like it's very similar to this, to where you say, like what you're saying, well, I've never experienced anything dark. Thus there must not be anything dark is such a bizarre conclusion to draw that like you are capable of seeing the entirety of like whatever the energetic spiritual world is and and you're able to draw that conclusion and say it with your full chest like i i can't comprehend um believing that you understand it all to that degree yes and and this person i don't know that they well i have had other people say it to me in that degree this person was lovely so i don't even want to point it but you know what i'm talking about people will come up and be aggressive about that that you're crazy and this doesn't exist and you know what i'm fully gonna say what if i die and find out i was nuts and i created all these dark things and it was part of me i'm open that could be but 
yes. And that's the game I wanted to play. Cool. Right? Yes. And uh, so I, I, there's, we, we got a 50 50 chance that one of us is crazy and I'm on 50% also. But I do. You know, but that's where I go. Why, but then why do you have the overlap like we're talking about with Tommy, where it's like, mm. it's, so we're both the same kind of crazy? Like, uh, what yep. are the chances or like statistically, what are the chances of that? Yeah. And, and maybe Tommy and I missed a layer where if we didn't ever believe it and didn't ever open that door, we'd be telling people there isn't, but I don't, you know what I mean? There's so, there's so much, but I will say this is what's very odd to me. It is a very large number of mediums who it's mediums that don't believe in dark stuff. And that makes me nervous. And then I wonder where they're getting their information. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't, I wonder if that has to do with, like, I don't know how many mediums communicate necessarily with entities versus like just the dead. Because I think they, they come from different places. Like when I hear from an entity versus like a, you know, a deceased loved one, it's, it's come like, you're talking about these layers. It comes from different places. It feels like a different frequency, not that they don't ever overlap, but I wonder again, like how much of this work that we do, we draw the conclusions just from the places that we interact. And, and like you say, maybe not all of us are touching all of the same layers. Yeah. And, and I do think there is something to, when people move somewhere, when I moved to San Diego, I knew California was for me. When I was in kindergarten, I pointed to a place on the map and I said, that's where I'm going to live. What is that? And the teacher said, that's California. Mm. And I, I, even not having to be exactly in California, but that was my space. And like I said, um, somebody else may move to Utica and it'll be the greatest place they could ever live. But it's a different in tune. I'm not in tune here. So it's a different layer. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe mm-hmm. I, uh, but I, I, the more yeah. I examine that, the like, even when I say elementals here, this room that I'm in becomes filled with things. Yeah. I like, mean, yeah. I feel this. I'm, I'm right there with you. We like, we trans, we're transplants from a different state. And I feel like, that's almost like the gift is to be able to realize, oh, I can like touch and taste and sense the flavor of where I am now because I've really immersed myself and lived in a few different places. And mm-hmm. it's not just a visit. It's really like you get to know um, the energy of, like you say, the land. And I think there's something to be said for putting yourself in land that doesn't resonate and then land that does and comparing the two and learning from both. Um, cause I know you've had so many experiences being there, but you also know what it is to be fully kind of in your power, in your space. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, this will be interesting because when my mom is being taken care of and that huge sort of layer comes off where now I just get to see her as a visitor, not as a constant, are you all right? Do we need to go to the doctor? Right, right. So right. I'm waiting to see what upstate New York will feel like at that point. I, I cause I think I have a, like a three month layover. I'm not just going to leave her cold turkey. So I have like a three month layover where I'm like, this will be interesting to see what this land feels like without a burden on me. Yeah. I think that's a really good point too. What we bring to the land influences the way we see and interact with it and the conclusions we draw about it, which I think is true of all of this work. I think the, there's like this concept, um, in indigenous medicine, like spiritual medicine, where it's like, you become the hollow bone, like you, the goal in the work is to remove as much as self as possible so that you can hear messaging without, like preconceived notions. Right. Um, and, but I think to deny that those layers aren't there and to deny that there isn't, um, um, I just individuality for mm-hmm. like, there are times where I hear messages. And I'm like, I don't want to deliver that. That doesn't sit well with like who I am as a person. And they're like, that's okay. That's not your business. And yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, I've I'm gone not. through that too. I've, I've gone through that where, I, and you know, that was part of what, when you do this business enough, when you need read enough tarot cards, you learn uh, talking to people who you judged, who you mm-hmm. thought you were better than who you thought you were less than. And it all is, that's the most beautiful thing about the clients is they will teach us something. 
Oh my gosh. Yes. I feel like I am for every client that I have a better person because I see how many doors there are to enlightenment and how many paths um, someone can take and how many U-turns and how like the difficult things and the challenges that were meaningful. And I just, I feel like in terms of judging people, it feels so much easier just to say, let kind of what we're talking about, let someone else's truth be theirs and I'm entitled to mine as well. And Mm -hmm. um, it's a gift. Yeah. And if this is really what I kind of suspect, again, this doesn't go against the matrix or God. I think it's all a part I think it's all a part that we can't understand right now, but I always think we are a reality show for something. And mm-hmm. so everybody is, I feel like somebody's watching us and it's almost like I picture the aliens like with popcorn, like, wait, we got to see on this channel. What is that person going into surgery? Do you think they're going to make it? What kind of stuff, which really I, I kind of love because that's why everyone's playing a different part because a movie has to have an antagonist and a protagonist. You know what? I have a funny, um, a funny story about that where I don't know who's watching or to what extent, but sometimes I'll have moms who are um, pregnant come in and their babies who obviously aren't here and, I mean, I'm talking like, uh, well, what's a good one? Okay. So I had a mom come to me who I, she said she was trying to get pregnant. And a few months after our session, um, her baby literally like taps me on the shoulder and shows me him like descending down this escalator. (laughs) I was like, oh, you're on your way. And he was like, yep, I'm coming. I was like, great. And so I, I, I wait to hear from the mom and she's like, oh my gosh, I'm pregnant. And I'm like, oh, look, I I screenshot this and wrote it down with the date and time. Like he said he was on his way. And she's like, oh my gosh, that's the, that's the week that we conceived him, blah, blah, blah. And then we have a session right before he's born and he tells me, oh, I know my name. And I'm like, you know your name. And he's like, yeah, I'm being named after, um, one of the like males in her family um, and the parents weren't sharing um, the name of the baby with anyone. And he starts telling me, he's like, my name starts with an R, da, 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 da. And I'm like, don't tell me more. Your, your mom and dad don't want me to know. Like, don't tell me. And he's like, oh, okay. And it's like this idea of going, is it ETs watching? Sure. Is there a God consciousness watching? Who's to say? Like, but I know that there are babies who don't yet exist, <laughs> like, in, <laughs> yeah. like fully in physical form telling me, Hey, I'm on my way. Hey, I know my name. Like, and so they, I mean, they're around and watching and we have like, when you see a medium and the medium's able to be like, Hey, your dad's been watching. He saw you like since he passed, you had, you know, these things happen to you and they can confirm that. And I go at the very least, uh, what are we pulling information from if our loved ones aren't hanging around us watching? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. You know what? <laughs> I either want to learn mediumship or remote viewing or something. Um, past like yeah they are watching out for you or they're okay like i want to learn the insurance numbers i want to learn the <laughs> policy numbers of the insurance company. not i'm not the lottery stuff that's not my gig but um alex i'm so glad we reconnected this was great i had such a nice time it was just it was like a fun coffee chat <laughs> it was and i hope that uh everyone out there learned to feel a little bit better about their reality or what they believe to be their reality if someone is telling you it's not yeah yep autonomy individuality gotta step into that power it's hard to make a truth structure for yourself and i feel like uh, the best thing that I would like leave anyone with is just stay curious, stay flexible and allow yourself to reinvent what truth and reality um, means to you many times because otherwise you're going to prevent growth and um, it's okay to, it's okay to change. It's okay to evolve and it's okay to let this work or the woo or like spiritual paranormal experiences grow you as well yes all right tell everyone where they can find you you can find me um at my website embracingwild.com um i'm also on instagram under embracing or um yeah embracing underscore wild i don't 
posts on like I'll go through phases where I'm like I'm posting all the time and then I disappear for a while so you I'll I'll respond to messages and stuff but sometimes (laughs) you'll see me sometimes you won't I need to hide and preserve my energy or reserve my energy from time to time but you can find me there and then um you can uh, embracing web my website will work for death work but I'm also part of an organization local to Idaho from really really inclusive kind diverse um group of death doulas who work here and that is um that website's end of life doulas of idaho um and you'll find me on either awesome all right my friend good to have you back all right everybody join the patreon we're doing uh we have one uh class a month where you get to come in and practice your reading, whatever you're learning that's new in a safe space with another person. So that is also safe and it's all helpful. Or then we have tarot classes. I have the energy read of the week, all kinds of stuff, two extra episodes of paranormal care. And that it's just me talking about garbage uh, or stuff. All right, everybody. Thanks to Mike at Una rising media. We'll see you next week. Paranormal Karen. She's a spooky kind of queen. Paranormal Karen, she's an angel without wings. Comedian, ghost hunter, conscious exploring. She's a funny gal and a real whoop pal. She's Paranormal Karen.